What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Johnny. Thanks for tuning in to my channel. All right, today I want to do a, a short video about a book, one of the a, a favorite favorite of mine that I've read multiple times. Uh, As a man thinketh by James Allen, and I want to just share share how it for me anyway, how it ties into current society and what I think a lot of people are missing. You see, I like to um, go back to to books before there was the internet. The internet has created a lot of groupthink. And, and what really fascinates me about these books in the early 1900s and 1800s is that you had to really sit and think and you had to you understand cause and effect. And your ideas and your opinion had to be your own opinion. You couldn't be influenced by your favorite rapper or your favorite athlete. It was either your mama and your daddy, your grandparents, somebody in your immediate community or you, or you thought for yourself. And during this time, a lot of black people weren't reading James Allen, uh, Earl Nightingale, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Uh, and also going on in the um, early 1910s, 20s, and 30s, there was a big communist movement in the South that was influencing a lot of black people to think certain ways and act certain ways. And W.E.B. Du Bois and NAACP, when they all started, those were started by liberals with communist ideologies so all of the the thinking has always tried to come from somewhere else and that's why i like a booker t washington who was really big on a, a thinking and doing for yourself but i wanted to play a, a few um clips from this book just to share with the the general public because i know a lot of people just haven't heard heard this stuff and then i'll i'll break it in of why i think how it ties together with uh being in america As a man thinketh, in his heart, so is he, not only embraces the whole of a man's being, but is so comprehensive as to reach out to every condition and circumstance of his life. A man is literally what he thinks, his character being the complete sum of all his thoughts. A man is literally what he thinks, his character being the complete sum of his thoughts. Why do you think there's so much negative imagery placed in front of you? over and over and over and over again. Because what you're acting out is what you're internally thinking. A lot of people in life feel like the outer world affects the inner world. And that is so far from the truth. Everything that you think, you project out. So like if you're sitting down and you're angry, you can look at your face and see it. it. It's hard for you to hide it. And that's just the human nature in us, the human instinct in us. All of us have biases. All of us have predetermined prejudice, all these things, because we're human. We all have fight or flight. We have to know how to protect ourselves from a threat. So to say that that's not real, one is going against biology. But two, I'm not predetermined to be any type of way. I'm predetermined to be me. Because I have my own thoughts, my own opinion, my own views. So why are we collectively bunched together as black? Why do all black people have to think the same or like the thing, same things or, or, or have any of the same ideologies? Unless someone else wants to do our thinking for us. Unless someone else doesn't want us to know that we're free. See, I look at freedom differently than a lot of people. Uh, we're going to continue in this book. But freedom was a lot more than somebody saying, hey, you can move from Texas to California now. As the plant springs from, and could not be without, the seed, so every act of a man springs from the hidden seeds of thought and could not have appeared without them. This applies equally to those acts called spontaneous and unpremeditated as to those which are deliberately executed. Act is the blossom of thought and joy and suffering are its fruits. Thus does a man garner in the sweet and bitter fruitage of his own husbandry. Thought in the mind hath made us what we are, by thought was wrought and built. If a man's mind hath evil thoughts, pain comes on him as comes the wheel the ox behind. If one in if, if a man's mind has evil thoughts, right? And I know a, a young, I'm sure a lot of people have heard of YNW Melly, Murder on my mind. And while that's a fantastic song, 
What do you honestly have to be thinking about to come up with a song, Murder on My Mind? Something pretty dark. Your thoughts manifest into your reality. I'm not saying here nor there whether he committed a crime or not. I'm just saying from a societal standpoint, we got to pay attention to what seeds have been planted in our young kids as we're, as we're hearing from 1903 that every thought can manifest. So if I'm showing all of these young children LGBTQ imagery all over the place, I'm just planting little seeds in these kids' heads. Subconsciously, this child doesn't know that that's there, and that may manifest 14 years later when he's in a, a, a curious situation. And I'm not saying anything here nor there. I'm just saying we have to acknowledge that our, our young boys aren't inherently violent. I got a lot of friends that was hanging out of car, shooting guns that were great guys. However, they love that type of music. They love that type of imagery, and they watch their mama date those type of men. What we see plays a huge role in what we think we should become. All these little seeds planted in our face. I always go back to when I was a kid and I seen Lil Wayne on the front of the Source magazine for the first time covered in tats. That was a seed planted in my head that I wanted to be that way. When I seen Trey Songz making music videos, laying in the bed with three, four girls, that was a seed that was planted in my head that I wanted to be that way. When the number one stunner uh, music video came out and they had the cars with the 22s and the, 20, and the, and the 20s and, and the TVs in the car, that was a seed that was planted in my head. And that's why I grew up and I had a car with TVs and rims and all that. And I always say, what if the seeds were planted in my head to grow up and be a doctor, Johnny? Grow up and start your own business. Grow up and don't have kids before marriage. All of these seeds that we can plant in our in our children's head, but we choose not to. And then we choose to place blame on someone else when the negative seeds manifest into their reality. I worked at a school recently, uh, last five years of my life, in the car rider line. I used to pay attention to what parents pulled up and what music they were listening to because your kids are in the back backseat hearing that music. My children to this day have no idea about urban and I won't say no idea because they've heard kids bop. You know what I mean? They've picked up stuff from here and there. But when they ride in the car with daddy to this day, it's audiobooks. Why not? If you're going to be subconsciously hearing what's going on around you anyway, why not let it be something positive? Why, no, why does it need to be, you're black, you're going to die. You're black, the police hate you. You're black, you're oppressed. Why, why as parents do we choose to put those type of things in our children's mind? knowing that they have to grow up and face reality on their own one day. Just, just things I'd be wondering, like, man, what, what are we really trying to accomplish by putting negative seeds in, our, in, in the youth's head, especially Black America? When in my mind, Black America is so talented. At, at this point in 2021, with the resources we have and the things that we've overcome as Black people, oh, my God, that's why they're pushing this propaganda so hard. They're nervous. They ain't stopped this yet. Endure in purity of thought. Joy follows him. As his own shadow, sure. Man is a growth by law, and not a creation by artifice. And cause and effect is as absolute and undeviating in the hidden realm of thought as in the world of visible and material things. A noble and godlike character is not a thing of favor or chance, but is the natural result of continued effort in right thinking, the effect of long-cherished association with godlike thoughts. An ignoble and bestial character, by the same process, is the result of the continued harboring of groveling thoughts. So what I think we all have to, like I said, I mean, I hope a lot of this content just gets spread. Why? Because a lot of it, most people have never heard. All your spirit does is think. If you remove a, your spirit from your body, that body drops dead. I can't see where that spirit go. I can't see what happens. And I'm not saying it's a future life or a past life. All of I'm saying is there's something inside of each one of us that can controls everything about us. And what's inside of me is 100% different inside of everyone that will see this video. So why do we have to think the same? Why do I have to feel like I'm oppressed and you have to feel like you're oppressed? Your own thoughts are your individual thoughts. And one thing I want to clear up is when I say they don't want us to be successful, I'm not speaking on a, a, a white, 
individual, a white society, or or anyone. Like I'm saying, I'm speaking on the powers that be, the 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 globalist elites who are trying to make everything a one all be all. The the people who are pushing the great reset. Because my from what I what I grab when I read these books and I look at these concepts, is that all of us could be great. All of us have godlike power inside of us. That there is an individual million dollar roadmap for every one of us. And that's why society wants so hard to control the way we think, to control the way we act, to say, well, you're black, so you can only be this, you're, you're this. There's a reason that everybody wants to come to America. I'm going to link the audio book to this book in the description as well as the, the, um, the hard book copy if you want to purchase it from Amazon. I'm a big book reader, and I want to. I always want to go back before the internet, because those people had to use their brain, and everything is fed to us right now. Thirty second clips, seven second clips, five second clips, and most of the time it's someone' opinion that's not true. Remember the game telephone when we were a kid? It would start off waffles, and by the time it got to somebody else, it was water or watermelon or something crazy. That's life. So you have to independently research for yourself, just like I do. I always say the best thing that ever happened to me, but one of the best things was my mother passing away. Because when I think we all can say that as, as young black boys, we got mama's boy syndrome like a fool. Mama is God. And we have to evolve past that or we'll never grow into men. But when my mom passed away, you know, there was no one to ask simple questions. What age did I get asthma? What age did I, did I you know, learn how to ride a bike? There was a lot of things that mama wasn't there. And, you know, while I have a great relationship with my dad, um, he, he wasn't, he was at work all day. You know, he was at work and when he was at home, he was drunk and, or he was fighting with my mama. So it was, I had to start reading on my own. I couldn't just turn to the world and take anyone else's opinion. Like I was, I was logical enough to know, like, I'll trust my mama blindly, but I'm not going to trust anyone else blindly. So that led me into this rabbit hole of, of reading books and understanding that everything that I thought I knew about the world was 150 million percent wrong. And so now I understand that, that I'm an individual. I can do what I want. I can do, create whatever I want and nothing can stop me but me. If I put in the effort, if I plant the seed, then I will reap what I sow. So I learned to stop <clears throat> consuming negativity. And I learned to stop putting negativity out into the world. Cause I didn't want to receive that in my life. And I think if more of us knew on a basic common sense principle that you reap what you sow, a lot of us would disconnect from the negativity, but we born into families that are crazy. Sometimes we go through some, some situations that it's hard to rebound from. And so we let that, that negative seed hold us and all we manifest into our life are negative, negative results. The key to understanding this thing called life is in these books. In the early 1900s, the 1800s, the ancient Rome times. That's where we got to study. Because they're trying to keep us caught up on our skin color. And this man, when I say the world is so much bigger than what color you are, always has, always will be. Under, understand why someone wants you to think so small. And once you start asking questions like that, you won't stop because I didn't. Once you start finding knowledge, you'll realize the, lob the world is a library for you. Everything around you has something to teach you. One of, one of the best quotes I've ever heard was, no man is your friend, no man is your enemy, every man is your teacher. Because you can learn something from somebody. You can look at them and say, yeah, I don't never want to act like that. Cause, Or you can see someone like, oh, my God, that's impressive. I want to, how, how did you, how did you accomplish that? What, what steps did you take? Whatever this, whatever way this thing goes, we all are here to help the next generation. We spend so much time focusing on our ancestors, our ancestors, and looking backwards. While I appreciate everything they, they did, I'm worried about my descendants. I'm worried about 100 years after I'm gone, what did I leave for the, my, the generation behind me and behind them? What did I create so in 200 years, my great, great, great grandchildren say, man, we're so appreciative of, of, of Grandpa Calloway and the foundation he built for our family. That's where they twisting us up. Stop looking backwards. Say, all right, you, you got that. You won. 
But watch what I do. Because right now, Elon Musk is building a future for his kids and his kids' kids. And so is Jeff Bezos. And so is Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and LeBron James and Dwayne Wade and all them. What are you doing? Pay attention to what's happening and why they're keeping you stuck on something that's gone. The only thing you have is the moment. There is no past. There is no future. There is the present. Plant a positive seed in this present moment so it will manifest into something positive in your future. Whether that's one year, three years, five years, or 10 years, make sure you are always planting positive seeds because you never know when you need them positive seeds to come back and help you out. So read the book as a man thinketh. Drop some comments below. Let me know what you think about the video. Like, share, subscribe. Spread positive love. Spread positive energy. Spread positive vibes. And remember.